Welcome back to week two of the Indiana State Coaches Show, presented by our friends at 7th and Elm Bar and Grill at the corner of Food and Fun. we got a great show for you today. Summer Pitzer and Vicki Hall will join us later for the women's portion. Jake LaRavia will be coming up here in a matter of moments, but we begin, as always, with the head coach, Greg Lansing, back in studio this week. Coach, just first and foremost, how was Thanksgiving? I know you were able to surprise the guys, able to take them some meals, and also have a little bit of a special Zoom call later that night. Well, I'd, I'd have to say this is the – most odd uh, Thanksgiving I've ever had with all of our guys having to be uh, stay at home. You know, they had to be in their apartments, uh, in their rooms, staying away from people, as did the coaching staff. Now, we had continued to do testing, uh, and everybody continued to do negative. I think we've had four or five uh, – everybody's had four or five negative tests in a row here, but uh, Christy kind of had the idea of we need to take them something special for Thanksgiving. So – uh, it took a lot long. It was more work than what I thought it was going to be, but uh, we had some really good people. You know all these people, our friends, our close friends, uh, make uh, some rolls here, some corn here, some turkey here, some stuffing here, and it took Christy and I about uh, four hours to, to put every, put everybody's in a bag, even had cheesecake for them for dessert, um, and then to go deliver them uh, partic- you know, to each individual guy and uh, something special. Those guys are pretty sure there's a lot of food, uh, but we want to take care of them. We want them to be able to have some th- something, something for Thanksgiving. And then uh, we barely got home in time. We had a 2 o'clock Zoom set up, and they didn't know uh, we were going to have some fans on there. Uh, to get him, you know, Vicky with the woo woo, so they could get <laughs> excited because they wanted to see him. So we had a bunch of people on with us, and then uh, that was at two o'clock. Then at two thirty, we brought family members uh, of each kid in, and they really enjoyed that. And I think the families, I got a lot of text with some thank yous for that, but uh, turned out to be a pretty special day all in all, even though we each had to be in our own place. No, you mentioned passing tests, uh, which is good. Starting to get a lot of negative results. Uh, when you think of testing last week, just now you're able to get back in to the gym. You're yeah. able to start to do some individual stuff here on Monday. Just kind of a status update of where you guys are at in terms of your pause. It's crazy, you know, and, and this isn't going to be we're, – we're, we're always talking to guys, too. We're not making, making excuses about any of this. Everybody's going to have to deal with it. You and I goes – plays their first three games without one of their starters and loses all three games, you know. I mean, so it's going to be – uh, people are going to have to deal with it every game, and you know we're going to we're no different. But we were we couldn't do anything for ten days. I mean, these guys are at home. Um, the only thing they can do is work out outside, like go for a run outside. They can't come here into the gym. They can't do anything. So imagine that for a college basketball player. And then um, now uh, we've had the we've had that extended period where we've passed all these tests, and we've been on the zooms with Dr. McDonald and and Connor and Kellen, and they're just <laughs> working multiple overtimes just to, to to try to get us to be able to play. So now we're situated. Well, this week, this Monday through Friday, we have three courts out here in the arena. It has to be one player with one coach on each of the three individual courts. They get an hour clean the place then the next uh half year and a half a half hour after that same thing one player with one coach on three individual colts so we're doing that from nine in the morning till two in the afternoon uh today and we have to do that all week so <laughs> it's different it's crazy time but what they're trying to do is isolate us from each other make sure it wasn't a, a complete spread you know we've we, we had one test coming into uh four weeks ago and then we had a we had a couple couple three more and and uh, so we're everybody's having to deal with that right now we have nine guys tomorrow we'll have 10 uh, uh, and we'll be able to do a team practice actually on saturday which would be nice going into trying to play somebody else tuesday you mentioned how everybody else is dealing with unfortunately you and i had trey burhow get ruled out right before Going to their and a good player, South, really. probably their best defensive player too. And then Southern Illinois released that head coach Brian Mullins uh, uh, got the virus as well. Luckily, he's asymptomatic and doing well right now. For you as a leader, when you see other teams struggling with it, um, how do you try to combat with Connor and Dr. McDonald and Kellen to get you guys in the best position? Because as you mentioned, everybody's going to go through it at some point you, in time this year. You know, my heart goes out to those guys. Um, you know, Kellen's got a little one too, and Connor – um, is tight with his family, not being able to go home for th- – he's in quarantine too. He's not been able to go home for Thanksgiving. And, and Dr. McDonald, he is constantly the sounding board of all the coaches around here trying to make the best decision, the safest decision, but still to get us back as quick as we can. And it's an impossible job. It's a 
I mean, I could say it's a thankless job because people don't get it. I mean, we try to thank them every day, but uh, it's it's difficult. And you know, the with Sherard, you know, from Sherard on down with our administration trying to help us and support us and and help us while these guys are in quarantine, make sure we're getting them fed, doing the things that that we can do with them, and. You know, across the country, you look at a Ben Jacobson or a Brian Mole. You know, those guys. We we talk. We try to support each other because we know how it's going to be. Um, but it was really strange this last uh, week sitting there, starting on the 25th, watching all these other teams play. You know, there's a few in our league that haven't played yet, us Loyola and Southern. But watching all these other teams playing, I'm just sitting there not doing anything. You know, I'm like watching basketball, which is okay. It's like living the retired life. But we have a lot of work to do. At least today we can get started with it. You mentioned being able to watch some of those games. I know as difficult as it is as a coach, especially when you know you were expecting to play at that time too. But what were some of your observations of just some of the teams around the league that you were able to say through the first week and see through the first week, should say? And Drake had a really good win against Kansas State. Northern Iowa was really close. They had two halftime leads that they weren't able to hold on to there in South Dakota. But, of course, missing Trey Burhow, who's a heck of a player. What really stood out about the league? Bradley had some really good wins too. How, how good they are, you know, and you and I loses all three games, but they played really good opponents without a starter, and they just looked a little out of sync. They're starting a freshman of the born uh, kid that we recruited who's really good, and uh, they're going to get it figured out, believe me. I don't think they're near where they'll be defensively. I think they gave them 90 in the first <laughs> one, so that doesn't ever happen with, with Northern Iowa with those guys. So they got a lot of things to that they'll be working on and learn from, but at least they got to play the games. I thought Drake looked outstanding. Uh, if that's a bottom half team in our league, <laughs> look out. Uh, really good. Bradley, obviously tough and talented and big and long uh, a couple new additions in there that they like i saw Ev- i saw evansville um what if, i think i said about everybody that was on tv i watched them as much as they could but uh i think really good and uh like i kept telling the guys is teams in our league play hard i mean they play hard so once we get back and we can get going again you have to understand that that's the minimum like like we always say it's the price of admission you have to play hard because people are going to make mistakes and they're going to have to deal with some adversity haven't touched up on it yet. We did release it through the website, but the game against UND is still on, but it was moved from the 6th to the 8th. Just you kind of described the practice situation yeah. that you're in, and um, I'm sure just those extra couple days are, are going to be beneficial. Well, I'm, I got to thank uh, UND for doing that. Paul, Paul Cosaro is a, a, a friend and a, in his first year as a, as a head coach, and uh, him just being able to do it. They want to play that, obviously. It's a good game for them. But if we were going to try to do that on one one day of practice, there's no way we'd have been able to do it. So just backed it up a little bit as much as we could so we can get at least a game where we're playing somebody else um, here started off. you know. And I know it's not going to be ideal by any means, but uh, we'll deal with it and it'll be good to play somebody else. And it's a good, a good Division II basketball team. Jake LaRavia coming up next here on the show, Coach. And we've talked so much about him. Basically said anytime he's got the ball in his hands, it's – more than likely going to be a highlight with the improvement he's made. What are you most eager to see from Jake when you're finally able to hit that floor and see what you've seen in practice translate over into a game? Well, he's going to be a focal point for other teams' defenses now, and he knows it. Um, he, shoot, he's going to play point guard for us some. He's going to br- bring it up. He can score around the back. You know, he can he can do everything. But to see how he handles – other teams coming at him. You know, we're trying to talk about that when we were playing each other. Hey, other team, he gets to the rim. I'm saying other teams aren't going to let him get to the rim. And if he tries to spin, there's going to be help there every time. So he'll handle it. He might have stubby's toe here and there with a turnover or, or maybe not seeing the right play, but uh, he's a student of the game. He'll watch film. He'll figure it out, and he, he'll just make plays for other guys because he's a good passer. We'll talk to Jake LaRavia right after this short break, and then we'll close out the men's portion with Coach Lansing shortly thereafter. You're listening and watching the Indiana State Coaches Show presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Welcome back to the Indiana State Coaches Show, presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Just talked with head coach Greg Lance, and now it's time for Big Jake. Jake LaRavia joins the program. Jake, man, how are you doing? I know it's obviously a different time uh, with Thanksgiving last week, and 
with all the different protocols you guys have been going through. I know not the typical Thanksgiving, but how was your Thanksgiving week last week? I mean, I think it was pretty good. We got provided with a great meal from uh, some of the people that help out the team. Uh, so so I was able to eat good, but it was just a, a lonely Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know. It's it's hard. You know, it's been hard on all of us and just the different scenarios we've been put through over these last couple months just during the whole pandemic. But how much harder was it for you to turn on the TV and see it seemed like everybody else starting to play games when you guys just haven't gotten that opportunity yet? Yeah, I mean, it seemed like we were one of the only teams that weren't playing because, you know, I was just watching basketball pretty much the whole time we were out and uh, um, pretty much seeing every team in the, in the Valley being able to play in the tournaments that they were playing in or just playing in the games, the exhibition games that they were playing in. Um, I mean, it was tough to watch, obviously, because I know that the team wants to be out there. I want to be out there right now. But, you know, this is just something we got to do, and we'll be able to uh, come back stronger off of it. I know you've talked a ton about it. Coach Lansing has, too. Guys are doing everything you can in terms of following protocols. You know, obviously you live with Trey, and there's things that you guys try to do to make sure you're distanced from each other, even though you guys live with one another. Um, how do you feel the team has tried to respond to this, even though you guys haven't played yet, but you guys are doing everything right, just unfortunately just still waiting to play? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know the team is doing everything they can possible to uh, to follow these COVID protocols, and I know we do. Uh, we've been doing a good job, and it's just like these couple slip ups have been happening, and uh, you know that's the only reason this is happening. But you know, we just got to beat the adversity. It's going to happen all year, and we got to be able to find a way to come up off of it. We've had different conversations, Jake, over the last couple months, and have really pinpoint on things you feel you've improved in, whether it's your size, getting bigger, stronger, taller. Um, you're being used in a lot of different roles. Coach Lansing uses you at the point from time to time, different positions on the floor. For you, what makes you smile the most about getting ready to play with everything you've been able to work on this offseason? You're just ready for the opportunity. I mean, I'm just ready to get out there with a the team. I know the team has been working their butts off to, uh, to get ready for the season, and I know that we're all, you know, we're waiting to get out there, and I know that we're going to be great this year. So I think we're all just happy and excited to get back out on the floor. That's one of the things I really love about you is – you always make it about the team, not about yourself. And I think it's, you know, at least for us, to have somebody so young. You know, Tyreek had a lot of attention early on in his career. You obviously get it very young in your career here. Um, but just about the team, uh, what has you most excited about what you guys can have and what you guys can do this year? Yeah, I'm, I'm just really enjoying playing with the with the new guys that are coming in. Uh, you know, TJ, Randy, I know Calix is out, but he, he's a great player. Um, Julian. Um, he's a great point guard. He knows what he's doing. He has a he has a high IQ for a, a young age. Um, so I'm just excited to get out there with these new guys and, and play ball with them. You mentioned a guy like Julian. For someone that did step in as a freshman and contributed really right away as yourself, Trey was another one. What's your biggest message to someone like Julian to let them know, hey, yeah, you may be a freshman, but I was a year ago and was able to make an impact right away. What do you tell them to try to help a guy like Julian along? Yeah, I mean, I just tell him, you know, he's got to be able to stay composed. Um, he can't let the pace of the game rush him into doing uh, uh, bad things. I know his IQ is high, but sometimes he can make mistakes. But that's just something, you know, you do at a young age and something you gotta, he's got to work on. When you think back to your freshman year to now, when you go back and you watch yourself play, what's the one thing you go, man, that's the one thing I really have to improve on this year? It was definitely defense, definitely defense. Um, you know, I struggled a lot with, with uh, fouls or just letting people score. And, you know, obviously something that helps with size. You know, I've gotten bigger and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's going to help me this year with defense. Coach Lansing pointed that out to us, and he said you really take the onus defensively to improve there. What are areas you really focus on defensively, Jake, to help you improve? What are things you do you do, do that you have done this offseason to get you better in that regard? Uh, I think one of the big things with me was stretching. You know, I had I went through some, some injuries last year. So just being able to stay loose and, and you know, uh, you know, like doing stuff like stretching a lot, yoga, stuff like that, um, being able to keep my body loose. One of my things was my hips. My hips were always tight. So just being able to keep my hips loose, you know, and being able to move easier on the court. You know, there's a lot of people that I've had the pleasure to get to know. You are probably the most confident guy I've ever met uh, during my time here at Indiana State or really anywhere, uh, but also yet one of the most humble guys I've really come across. For you, where does the confidence come from? Because – there isn't a moment, there isn't a time where if I challenge you, if somebody challenges you to do something, you go, all right, I'll do it. Um, where does that come from for you? I mean, I struggled at a younger age with confidence, and um, especially in high school. Uh, 
I didn't really have a lot of confidence. So um, it was just something that I had to kind of flip the switch on. And, and, you know, once I got confidence, it just felt great. So I just continued to have it. It's just been continuing to grow. How would you describe that swagger? Because we get to see it every day. Um, I think it's even something you just got to swagger about yourself even when you're off the basketball court. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I just, you know, I, I just don't let anybody get into my head, and I let my game do the talking. But, you know, if I have to talk, then I'll talk. <laughs> no, no question about that. We we could probably show some clips of that, too, here during the show. Um, let's go off the floor for a moment. You know, one of the things I always joke about you, which is this show probably airs uh, later on tonight, you're probably having some tacos uh, while you're watching the show. That is like your favorite food why do you make it so much like what eventually i know you kind of explained it in your video we put out being a cali boy that's just one of the things you've always liked Uh, i mean it's the food that fuels me i I eat it all the time and maybe maybe it's the thing that helps me grow or you know maybe (laughs) it's the thing that keeps my confidence out there but tacos tacos are my go-to for sure i know tacos are your go-to if it does help you grow i think i need to eat more tacos because i like to be as big as jake laravia that's for sure definitely um I know you enjoy some Call of Duty in the office. You play, play some Fortnite, too, with the guys. Yeah. What are some of the biggest bonding things you try to do with your teammates that you can do socially distant? And I know video games is, of course, now a very popular thing to do. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's more fun to be able to hang out with them face-to-face, but it's just something that, you know, we have to sacrifice right now and something we cannot do. So, you know, if it's if it's something as little as, you know, playing Fortnite with the guys and I or playing Warzone with the guys and I, it's something, you know, that that's fun. That's still fun for us. You know, we're on the mic, we're talking to each other, we're laughing, we're having a great time. And it's just something that we have to do right now. One of the areas which you touched up on as well uh, that you feel that you've really improved in or that you took onus was was also yourself personally, um, growing uh, spiritually as well in the off season. Can you tell a difference for yourself from a year ago to now in that regard in maybe how that's just helped you combat, especially with all the different challenges you have to combat this year? Uh, I think the one thing I would say is I'm much happier uh, than I was last year, you know, mentally, both mentally and physically. Uh, I'm much happier. I might not show it because, uh, you know, certain things go on, but I think I'm, I'm much happier as a person this year. So get ready to play. Again, this week you guys are at least back in the gym to be able to do individuals this week, ultimately work into a team practice on Saturday. Of course, your first game still over a week away. But what do you try to do right now, Jake, really, this week, even though it's only individual time, to just make sure when you do get the team time come Saturday, you guys really haven't missed a beat and you're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we got to get the team knowing that it's a time where we have to lock in, we have to limit our mistakes, and we have to know what's going on so that we can be ready for, for our game. Are you ready to play? Are you ready to I'm get so out there? I'm so ready to game? play. I'm so ready to play. It's been, I know, a long off season, Jake, but continue to keep up the great work, man, and look forward to – actually seeing you hit the floor next week. Yes, sir. I'm excited. Once again, that was Jake LaRavia. We're going to take a break. When we come back, head coach Greg Lansing is here to wrap up the men's portion of the Indiana State Coaches Show, delivered by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Big thanks to Jake LaRavia for taking time to hop on here on the Indiana State Coaches Show. Coach Lansing rejoins us, and you mentioned as we were leading in the Jake, you're using him in a lot of different roles. What does it do for you in terms of the options you have when not only you can use Jake down low in the post, outside on the wing, but now giving him more experience with the ball in his hands and being able to run the point? Well, it makes him a mismatch a nightmare. You know, the more versatile you, versatile you are, the harder it is for other teams to prepare for you. Are they going to guard him with a smaller guy when he's out on the perimeter handling the ball? Are they going to guard him with a bigger guy uh, when he's around the basket? And then he can invert that. He can do whatever he wants. And he's smart enough and tough enough and, and competitive enough. He, he's going to see that. He's going to be able to do all those things throughout a possession. So it makes him really hard to prepare for and really hard to guard. Jake, of course, eager to be in that role. But what are some other things you're challenging him in as you continue to press on and say, this is where I need you to get better? Last year was really good, but I need you to take a step forward in maybe this area. Best players in the league defend. The best players in the league defend, and he wants to – I mean, he has high goals. He he wants to be the best player in the league and one of the best in the conference and one of the best in the country. Um, That's just the way he's wired. And um, he has taken it upon himself. He wants to guard. He wants the challenge of guarding a guard. Of, okay, here comes A.J. Green with you, and I know I want to guard that guy. Um, so he's competitive enough. There's no question uh, for him to do it. It's just something where it's a 
consistency as a as a bigger kid in high school you're standing straight up and down all the time I mean you can't do that for a second uh, guarding guards or guarding the people that he's going to be guarded and he was in a little foul trouble because he was out of position and not ready uh, a lot last year and uh, he does not want to come off the floor so to keep him out of foul trouble he's going to have to be on high alert at all times on the defensive end and he knows it and he's working on it. I know you joke with them from time to time but it's hard to see Jake and Trey not around each other from time to time. One, because they're roommates. They live with each other, but they obviously built a great bond last year. Their personalities, of course, really mix well, but also just that's a really good tandem to have and, and one I know you're really excited about, yeah. not just to have this year, but obviously years down the road. We have a lot of fun. I mean, they're, they're special uh, men. Uh, they really are. They're, they're outstanding students. They're, they're good with their families. Um, they're good with their teammates. They're good with our, our fans and our friends around our program. It's just, you know, kind of guys you build programs around. And, yeah, I give them a lot of crap. Like if I tell them if they're going to do contact tracing, it's going to, there's going to be probably 24, 23, <laughs> 23 hours a day that they're right next to each other. But it's funny when we do Zooms, I've been at their place, so they're in their own rooms, you know what I mean? And they're they're doing what they're supposed yeah. to do when there's – they don't even have a TV in the living room. So they just <laughs> go into their own rooms because they're not there very much. But uh, those guys are special, and that's what you want in your program. We'll talk more about UND next week in a program you have a tons of respect for and obviously is really, really good at the Division II level and have been for a long time. But as for this week and you press on, the individual time that you get, how do you structure this week in order to set up for those days of practice when you can finally get to them as a team? Well, being organized with it, there's going to be one coach, um, and Kareem's out, so it's going to be BC, uh, Odom, and James, and I get a fluck. I get to go in and out of all of them, and they have them for an hour. Then you got to incorporate. Uh, for one, you got to get the ball back in their hands because they've been without it for a long. Uh, for quite a while, and then uh, your skill work, uh, ball handling, passing, you know, get get your your natural ind- individual work in, but also some conditioning because Saturday we gotta we gotta go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and do some things as a team, so we're ready to try and play somebody else. So it's it's different, uh, but again, it's Monday through Friday. They get one hour on the floor with one individual coach, and that's really all we have. You know, I thought Todd Golden had a really good piece in the Tribune Star talking about yes, disappointing that. The season didn't start on time, but that doesn't mean all the positives just go away. He's and Todd I, said something positive. <laughs> He's usually a little more doom and gloom on that. But as you touched up on, I'm sure that's even some things as you guys as coaches and players. You get frustrated. You get it when you're seeing everybody else play. You're not playing. You want to play. That doesn't mean you just take time off. You got to get ready and progress. But also, there's still a lot of things that we're very eager to see once we well, get. Well, we're all excited, and it's frustrating. Sure, this they're dealing with a pandemic, something no student athletes ever had to deal with. But also, we're pretty fortunate uh, with our with where we are in our lives, and we have to think about others losing family members, losing businesses, losing their jobs, and. And that's why we definitely want to shop local, especially if we go in there at Seventh and Elm and get you some some lunch or dinner. And we appreciate those guys. But uh, we also talked about a, a couple days of just being like, hey, th- now we're not going to have that uh, the dog days of February now because we got this 10 day break in here. We had like a little fall break for us, so that, that they usually don't get. You know, you go to all the summer, you start in the fall. We got okay, we got 10 days off. All right, now we get to start back up, so we're going to be the fresher team and in uh, knock on wood in uh, February. Coach, really appreciate the time. Continue to stay healthy to you and the guys. And uh, let's have a good week, and we'll chat about you, Indy, next Monday. You too, Luke. Thanks. Once again, that was head coach Greg Lansing. When we come back, it's now time for head coach Vicki Hall and Summer Pitzer, the Indiana State Women's Basketball Program. You're listening and watching the Indiana State Coaches Show presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Welcome back to the NES State Coaches Show, delivered to you and presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill at the corner of Food and Fun. Victorious head coach Vicki Hall joins us after a big win against Detroit on Sunday afternoon. And coach, let's go ahead and start there. What a win for your team, and especially to do it about as shorthanded as possibly as you could be. Well, they your minimum amount of players are eight, and that's what we had. Um, you know, you just got to give the, the our ladies a lot of credit. Um, you know, it's, it's a dramatic, difficult time 
you know, we're in a pandemic. Uh, stuff is happening all the time. And they were able to keep their focus and their composure and, you know, and go on the road and, and win. It's never easy to go on the road, regardless of if it's in a pandemic era uh, where there aren't a lot of pages, just because there are the difficulties now in traveling and how much that puts extra on your team. But outside of all the extracurriculars that maybe you couldn't control, what did you like about your group and what you could control when it came to the game on Sunday on the court? Well, just our resiliency, you know, I mean, um, it was never, it was, it was an, it was a close game the entire time. Um, I think one of the exciting things that you could see that we didn't show at all at uh, Illinois uh, was that we actually can shoot the ball. Um, you know, we just need to be consistent with that. And that consistency comes with experience and, and, and age. And they're starting to understand that, oh, yeah, I really can do that. So it's good. I know you brought up the Illinois game, but the bottom line is getting games in are going to be key, especially here early. You know, yes, you enjoy practice time, uh, but, you know, there's only so much you can get out of a practice. You want to go up in games, competition, and see where you stack up. So I'm sure just the fact you were able to play both games is a big deal for you and your staff and the players. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it was, it's been a learning experience for everybody having to go through all the protocol and, and, you know, try to remain healthy and safe. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, doing what we have been working on um, and, you know, actually executing it in a game situation. Um, so the kids are excited about that they actually get to play, you know, um, that's, that's what they want to do. So that's good. You mentioned the execution part of it. When you think of maybe you weren't able to showcase exactly what you wanted on Wednesday night against Illinois to then turn around and being able to get the ball in the basket on Sunday. What were the biggest transformations you saw with your group just after having on court against a big 10 team in Illinois, that's going to be great competition for you. And then able to turn it right back around and show the improvements you were able to make uh, just a, not even a week later on Sunday. Well, I think, um, you know, Illinois is big. They, their smallest player is five ten. And not only are they big, they're thick, you know, and so our team is not that big. And um, I don't think that that doesn't mean that they can't do it. I just don't, I think they were intimidated by it um, to get, you know, for the first game, kind of get punched in the face a little bit. Um, but, you know, they came back against Detroit, who's a team that's like our size and kind of show that, oh, okay. And Detroit, Detroit did a lot of different things that challenges you. Like they'll, they press, they trap, they zone, they man, they do everything to try to make it, you know, difficult. Um, but we've been really working a lot this year on just um, scramble situations and disadvantage advantage situations and learning um, what does it mean and how do we capitalize on it? Essie Latu had a heck of a game for you. Uh, I know she's someone you were really excited about to add to your group this year. So far through two games is what she provided, what you thought she would provide for your group. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, yes. <laughs> Essie can shoot. She can flat out shoot. There are times in practice, you know, she'll try to do some other stuff. And I was like, eh, you're paid the big bucks to shoot it, shoot it, you know? <laughs> and um and, and uh, she did, she did on Sunday and that was really good. But, you know, it wasn't, you know, I know, no, uh, nothing against what Essie did because it was phenomenal. I mean, six three-pointers is more than what we averaged as a team last year uh, on a nightly basis. So that's phenomenal and exactly what we need. But it was a true team effort. I mean, we had Hattie Westerfeld who probably had her best game as a sycamore um, you know, uh, she really stepped up. Marie Hunter stepped up. Uh, Summer Pitzer stepped up. Uh, Caitlin Anderson did a great job of, of pushing the ball in transition and getting it out to our shooters. Uh, Callan Stumbo came in a, as a freshman and handled pressure, and, and I had her taking the ball out in difficult situations. Uh, Jay had a very nice, solid game, you know, getting her rebounds, and Adrian Folks. I mean, all eight. That's what I was the happiest about was because all eight players that played um, helped us. You know, you they all played an important role. 
you brought up all eight and you know not that any year is really different than any other but when you get put into a situation where you have the most minimum amount of players that you can have to play it really reinforces that you need everybody and i'm sure as a coach even though you'd like to maybe have some extra bodies and, and maybe throw in a few others that you could have i'm sure in building that depth coach hall yeah this could end up being a blessing for you as one of course you got the win and that's huge in its own right but you had some young players too have to grow up pretty fast. And, and that's, I mean, that's what I preach with them all the time, you know, Hey, okay, well, we're still young. We're only sophomores. No, no, you're not. <laughs> not in my book. You got to play a lot last year. You know, we're juniors, you know, play like a junior, play like a senior, you know, you, you can do that. Um, and they're starting to embrace that. I want them to continue to, I mean, we have a long road to hoe. We, we've got a lot of work to do to continue um, to, uh, to compete at the level that I want to compete at in the Missouri Valley because it's a very good league. Um, so are we there now? No, by any means. But uh, it's showing that we're starting to make the progress of getting there. You mentioned a long way to go and where you want this group to be at through two games. What's the biggest thing that you've seen that you want to see improvement on uh, as you begin uh, to get into more games later on this week? Well, consistency. Um, you know, in Illinois, we didn't shoot the ball well. Detroit, we did. You know, we've got to be able to know that we can go into a game and that's what we're going to get. Uh, not like, you know, random figuring out who's going to, who's going to make a basket this game. Um, we need to get better at our consistency as far as uh, our plays, being able to execute them and know what to look for, like learning the IQ of the basketball part of it, which, you know, they're, it's, it's not an easy thing. I mean, you know, and, and we're trying to teach them what reads are and the same defensively, you know, we've done a very good job on the board so far being an undersized team. Um, you know, we, we, I think we're averaging probably 38, 39 rebounds in the in the two games, which is very, very good, but we've got to do that on a consistent basis um, and continue to work on that. And just our defensive intensity, I'd like to be able to ratchet it up. Um, we haven't really been able to do it because we don't have the numbers, <laughs> but um, you know, everybody's getting opportunities, so that's good. How big of a challenge is that Coach Hall and is you know, one of the things you've always preached since you've been here is that defensive tenacity. And that's something you, you wanted to really be, uh, maybe not number one, but definitely one of the main identities of your team. That's what you want them to be described as, is very, uh, very opportunistic on defense and very aggressive. When you know those numbers in practice and you kind of have to get through a practice, you got to get through a week from time to time. How has that put you guys in terms of a staff to really try to figure out what would be uh, the best way to approach it. Because like you said, there's just a lot of maybe extracurricular stuff, especially in this season, more than years past. Well, there's a lot of things I'd like to do. But yeah. <laughs> uh, with, the, with the situation we're in, you got to do what's best for the opportunity for your team. And so there's a lot of things we're going to do this year that I probably would have never said Oh yeah, I want to do that. Um, but we're going to do it this year anyway, just we've, because you've got to be able to piece it together enough uh, to put yourself in a chance, in a, in a chance to win a game. And that means, you know, I've never been a big zone person, um, but knowing that you're low in numbers and, and fouls are of the essence, um, you have to be able to do that. But I don't want to, um, forego the idea of what defense is, regardless of if you're playing man or zone, you still play it hard and you still understand where you are and what your job is. Summer Pitzer is coming up next here on the show. Coach, what stood out about Summer 1 as a recruit and why you really wanted to focus on her and bring her in and really the improvement she's been able to make this offseason uh, to be even more of a big contributor for you this year? You know, Summer is just, she's a, she's a very smart basketball player. Um, she helps us in so many different ways in, in leadership, in her ability to just control the game. Um, she, I call her all the time. She's our, our one-man press break. 
uh, she, we have all these, we have a press break and all this, and then Summer will go in and just go right by everybody. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's a good break. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, I'm really, cause she's so selfless. It, I've had to really talk her into and need her need, need, need. So you could tell her that too, to keep shooting the ball, um, because she can shoot but she always, she's thinking to try to create for others first. And I need her to be a little more uh, selfish when it comes to that and, and knock down those open jumpers. We'll talk with Summer Pitzer here next year on the show, and then we'll wrap it up with head coach Vicki Hall. You're watching and listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Welcome back to the NES State Coaches Show. We were just talking about this one with head coach Vicki Hall. Summer Pitzer is our guest. As NES State coming off a really nice road win on Sunday afternoon against Detroit. One summer, I'm sure it's great just to get that winning feeling again. But number two, how nice is it to know you were able to play two games after it probably seems like forever when you weren't able to play at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just uh, super grateful for that, you know, because I know – you know, with everything that's going on, all these uncertain times and everything, um, you know, we're just really, really fortunate just to be able to, you know, each, each, each game, each practice we get, you know, we're super fortunate for it. What's gotten you through this time, Summer, to be ready to ultimately play when it's been such a start, stop, and go uh, type of process it seemed like for you over really the last, I mean, ever since this thing started? I mean, I, I would just have to say just making sure that your mind is always ready. Uh, I mean, you hope for the best, but, you know, always, like, be, pre be prepared for, you know, for things to come up for sure. But the biggest thing is, like, things can turn and switch at any minute. So just being ready for if it's time to go, for it's time to get ready, you know, just always staying ready, having your mind right. Last year – Talking to you heading into the season, I think you knew that you would have a big part of the team, uh, but of course, being a freshman, and there was still a lot for you to learn. What was the biggest thing you took away last year's summer that has you more ready for this year, and you've already felt it through two games? Um, I would just have to say for me, just getting comfortable with um, being out there and like basically like having to uh, make sure I know like the right positions for everybody, um, make sure that I'm doing my role, making sure that um, I'm putting my teammates in the right position for them to be successful. Um, I just feel definitely more confident this year. Last year, I think I put like way too much pressure on myself. Now I'm just able to relax and really play my game. What was the biggest thing you think you put on yourself last year, Summer, that uh, you've learned maybe not to put on yourself as you've gotten ready for this year? Uh, I would think I was just like, super nervous about um my performance like just trying to perform well and everything but now I'm just like just letting the game come to me uh trying to put my teammates in good positions to be successful and just trying to you know be a leader and everything so I think now I'm just you know just letting the game like just having to feel for the game and you know taking the right shot when it's time but knowing also when to pass and all that so just having a better feel for the game that's one area that Coach Hall just mentioned uh, to us with you is that she, she wants you to shoot more. Uh, she knows you have the capability, of course, to pass, to get your teammates open. Uh, mm -hmm. Where are you at in that regard, Summer, of trying to get that balance of, you know, you don't want to maybe be too selfish. Uh, you want to try to get your teammates in on the action, but also understand that you're a big contributor and have a lot of potential as well in terms of scoring the ball. Yes. Uh, so, like, Coming from, like, my high school and AAU, I've always been, like, you know, just, like, running the floor and everything. And I've always played with, uh, like, really good players. So is it, it was always, like, yeah, like, I can score. But, like, my main thing was, like, just getting everybody involved. And, like, now it's, like, I really kind of have to step up into that scoring role. But also, like, still being able to get everybody involved. So it, it definitely just trying to figure out like the balance of 
when to pass it, when to shoot, just like trying to make the right reads during the plays and not just overthinking or trying to go into a play, anticipating what's going to happen, just letting it come. Illinois, really good team, of course, out of the Big Ten. Just getting that experience, I know, of course, is is valuable. But what mm-hmm. did all of you take from the loss on Wednesday against Illinois to really apply it and help you get through a win on Sunday when you only had eight available? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I feel like we, we just need to do a better job of uh, – making sure that we're dialed in all together. And I think that we realized that, like, after the game, that we was kind of a little bit off track a little bit. And so then with only having eight, we really had to pull it together and work together and making sure that we're sticking to the game plan. So I think that that really helped us a lot, just sticking to the game plan, sticking to what, you know, Coach Hall is um, trying to get us to do, and then just trusting each other, relying on each other. I think we, we did that a lot yesterday, just like by the way we was able to move the ball and our defense, you know, we really executed on both sides of the floor. One of the areas I know Coach Hall wanted to see the team improve in this year was shooting the basketball. And, you know, mm-hmm. a big part of the win yesterday on Sunday was Essie and what she mm-hmm. provided from behind the arc and has through two games. Um, not just Essie, but everyone else involved, where do you see this team growing right now, Summer, and really has the potential to come together and maybe surprise some folks that don't expect too much out of you? Yeah, that was definitely um, a big thing that we struggled with last year. We relied um, a lot on, like, our inside game and trying to get to the rim and everything. But now we really have people that can really shoot the ball. Like, Essie, she shot the ball amazing yesterday. Marie shot the ball really well. Um Everybody was really shooting the ball really well, and that's always going to help, you know, because then you're able to pull teams out, and then that was what open lanes, what helps get our post players involved in the game and everything. So knocking down shots is, you know, such a big key, and I think that is definitely an area that we have grown so much, and, and we will continue to grow, especially when we get Berger and Nat back and everybody. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see, you know, us all together and what we can do you know a win is a win it doesn't matter how you get it but how much more does it add to it summer when you had to do it so shorthanded I mm-hmm. assume on, on really short notice and we, you know when you only have eight uh, which that is the bare minimum you need uh, in order to play a game this year uh, to know that you everybody was able to pull together and find a way to win the game when you literally had to take advantage of everybody that was on your sideline? Mm-hmm. It, it felt amazing. It was great. Um, you know, because it was really difficult, you know, just like the whole, like, not sure, like, if we're going to play, how many is able to play, you know. But, you know, for us to be able to stay strong and – uh, just really rely on each other really meant a lot. And to pull out the win, it just it, – it felt amazing. It's like all your hard work that you've been putting into, you know. And, like, just not being able to play basketball in so long, you know, and then finally be able to get out here and show show each other what we can really do, you know. You know, it's just like the sky's the limit. You know, Summer, let's take it off the floor here for a moment. You know, I know you've been very active here on campus and – in terms of the student athletes really getting their messaging out uh, on tons of different issues from racial injustices, the social injustices to everything else, which we've talked about uh, just here in our studios as well, too, with more videos to come out. Where, 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 how has that been a big part of you and your growth this year in terms of basketball, just in how much more of a voice you really been, not just within your own team, but really within the athletic community here at Indiana State? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I feel like that, you know, that is so much bigger than, you know, anything that like any of us are doing out on the court, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like real life, you know, things, you know what I'm saying? So it's so important that, you know, 
we all continue to, for one, like educate ourselves about what's going on. And then for two, just being open to listening to change. You know what I'm saying? I, and I really appreciate my teammates because they always are so open to listening to anything that anybody has to say. And, you know, we really try to apply it and try to be a change in the community for sure. So, you know, we, we got to continue to grow. We're not where we need to be, but, you know, I think we're definitely moving in the right direction. You know, you more personally, last week, Jay on the show, Jamira showed us her slippers uh, and some other <laughs> crazy things that she may wear from time to time. You're a little bit more even keel, aren't you? Uh, your, your wardrobe's not that crazy, is it? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, no, not that crazy. Yeah, that girl and her slippers. But no, I do wear uh, my Christmas pajamas, you know. They got little reindeers on them. That's about as crazy as it gets, you know. You might see me walk outside with them, but I really don't be wearing them all like that. <laughs> What what overall, how would you describe yourself away from the basketball court summer when there's not a basketball in your hand, which is not very often these days, I know, because it's mm -hmm. where you spend the majority of your time, but what do you enjoy doing uh, just away from basketball? I mean, really, I'm, just, I'm a real chill person, so I really just be chilling for real, uh, watching movies. I'm a real, like, big Christmas person, so now I'm excited. Now I see this little snow outside, a little bit, it's a little snowfall. So, yeah, I really, if I'm not playing basketball, I'm at my apartment, sitting, chilling, watching movies, watching TV shows. So I'm going to put you on the spot here since you brought that up. What's your favorite <laughs> all-time Christmas movie? What is the one movie you're going to put in at any time? And it doesn't matter. You're going to watch it all the way through because it's just it's your, it's your favorite movie. Uh. My favorite Christmas movie. Mm. I'm gonna have to go with Home Alone. Okay, there you go. That's a, yeah. That's a very good choice. That's a classic choice. It's a, it's a classic, you know. Uh, the first and the second one. After that, no. But yeah, those two. Yeah, I can watch them at any time, even if it's not Christmas. I agree. And I, I, not that I'm sure you probably uh, are like Kevin McAllister and probably set up your apartment with like, you know, make sure your teammates can't get in or anything. I, I don't know. I don't know if you really do that from time to time. That'd be pretty impressive, but uh, uh, no doubt those are class. I'm just glad you've watched Home Alone. That, that makes me feel a little bit younger, Summer. That's, that's, that's definitely up there for me, too. Uh, just getting back here quickly, Summer, to basketball. Friday, you play Murray State. You'll have another game shortly on Monday next week against Western Illinois, but just Murray State first. That was a game last year that was really, really close, and it was really back and forth before the Racers really went, went on a run late to win that game. What needs to be different this year uh, for you and the team to get a win on Friday and, and keep really the positive vibes building after what you were able to do yesterday? Mm, yeah, so Murray State, they're a really good team. Uh, they can really score the ball really well. Um, last year, we definitely got into – foul trouble in that game we we fouled them a lot so just being disciplined on defense and you know sticking to our game plan like I said before and also you know just believing in ourselves believing in each other like we did yesterday and I think we'll be pretty successful are you gonna wear those uh reindeer or Christmas pajamas <laughs> to the game on Friday to shoot around might, or I might just have to I might just bust them out for you <laughs> Summer, one, I appreciate the time talking to us here on Monday and have a great week and get ready for some more wins this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Once again, that was Summer Pitzer. We're going to take a break here on the Coaches Show. When we come back, head coach Vicki Hall closes out the show. You are watching and listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show delivered to you by 7th and L Bar and Grill. All righty, Coach Halls, we obviously look towards Murray State, your next game here in Terre Haute this week. And, again, I know we all wish we could have fans and it would be a different circumstance, but I'm sure just now being able to play a game in renovated Holman Center, that's got to be a lot of anticipation from your group just to be able to have that opportunity on Friday. Well, we're super excited we get to go practice there for the first time uh, tomorrow. So um, we're 
excited just to be able to get in and, and shoot there and, and practice there. So yeah, and then just to be at home is a great thing. Um, you know, I was watching film of Murray State last night on the bus and they're good. Uh, they're very athletic, uh, they're long, and uh, it's gonna be a tough game for us. So we're, we're, we've gotta come and come ready. They've got, a, they've got some kids that can really, really, really score. Turley, I think she gave us like 30 last year. Uh, and now they've added a couple players to help her even more so. So we're going to have our hands full. You mentioned, of course, the difference uh, last year going on the road, playing at Murray State, them coming in this year. Uh, some key additions to their team, as you mentioned. But overall, is it almost kind of the same Murray State team as you saw a year ago in, in terms of the preparation aspect for them this, this week? No, not really. They're actually, they're playing a lot faster. They're playing, doing a lot of dribble drive actions. Um, they, so they've kind of transformed themselves. Uh, she's a new coach too. I think she's in her third year as well. So she, or fourth year, third or fourth year. So she's brought in, she's continued to bring in little pieces that are making differences. And she did a good job of, of bringing in a couple pieces that really uh, help accentuate uh, the really good scores that they had anyway. They, they played with Kentucky. It was, it was a game. Can, they gave Kentucky a game. You think of just in terms of when you're in the early season, of course, conditioning is, of course, a key aspect of that. And that's why, of course, you, you go through your practice sessions with your group. You continue to get ready from, from all the different situations you've been put through here in the offseason, Coach Hall. Have you felt for the most part that – when your teams hit the floor, that they've been ready from a physical aspect, from a conditioning aspect, because I know early on in the season, that's always a question, and I'm sure even more so this year for obvious reasons. Well, physically, uh, conditioning-wise, you know, I think that they're in a great position. I, I have to thank John Stein, our strength and conditioning coach, for that. He does a phenomenal job with our team um, because, you know, we got to understand that real quick up in personal uh, at Detroit when we had eight players and you know you can get tired and, and we're still hitting jumpers uh, in the fourth quarter so uh, hats off to him and to Kaylee our athletic trainer for helping us stay safe and healthy um, but yeah I'm happy about about that aspect of it um, we just got to continue it, the, the hard thing is is we've had people in and out of practice all the time so getting the chemistry and the continuity uh, has been a little difficult, and we, we still are going to be shorthanded um, Friday. Coach Hall, before you get to Friday, uh, of course, you got a week of preparation. So even though maybe short in numbers, uh, what are the biggest things you're trying to preach to your group here over the next couple of days as you get ready for a very good Murray State team on Friday? Well, we're going to have to defend. <laughs> Surprising that I say that, um, but we are. Uh, we're going to have to be able to execute uh, certain defenses that will help us mitigate their scoring ability because they can flat out score it. Um, and then on the other on the other side of the ball, we're going to have to take care uh, take care of it, take care of the ball, and also uh, take and and finish great opportunities that we we'll, we need to create with the continuity of our offense. Of course, Murray State, they do have a game with Evansville uh, tomorrow before they come here to Terre Haute on Friday. And you brought up they play Kentucky really well. Uh, what are ultimately you think, Coach Hall, going to be the keys for your group on Friday uh, to get a win against Murray State? Our defense, we've got to be stingy. We can't, we can't let them uh, go and score 80, 70 points. It's got to be 60s. And we've got to score at that pace uh, as well. Um, I think those are the two main things we've got to we've got to maintain and continue to dominate the boards. Um, and then I'd love to see us uh, limit our turnovers. We've we've averaged 21 a game and I'd like to get that into the teens. You know, you never want to put in, you know, the way I phrase this will probably be important, Coach Hall. But, you know, we know what Jamira can do and what she's done in the post. If you could add Hattie, Adrian and others to help her down low. What can that do for your group this year? And maybe, I don't want to say a ceiling on your group, but how much better can that make your group when you got more people down low than just Jamira who can draw attention, which can open up some, obviously some young talent and other talent that you have on your team that can shoot the ball. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
Coach Brittany, uh, Christian, she's new. And when she came in the door, she works with our post. I said, hey, I said, you got your hands full. I said, <laughs> I, need, I need to get these young kids ready. And, and like yesterday. Um, and she's done a great job of working with them and, and getting them in the gym. You know, uh, against Detroit, we're, what, two minutes, two something in the game. Uh, we're in foul trouble. Um, I, maybe two or four minutes, I don't remember off the top of my head, but we're in foul trouble. Jay's on the bench and we're, we're getting stagnant in our zone offense. And so I change what we're doing for something that I taught them a couple days before. And my two sophomores are in there. I'm like, Oh God, here we go. Let's see. And you know what? They did it. I'm so proud of them. That was a really proud moment that they were able to convert uh, in a, in a tough situation, game tied and we go score a bucket. And I was like, okay, so if we can keep building on that, you know, it's, it's going to do nothing but really, really help us. Well, Coach Hall, I know everyone's excited just to see renovated Holman Center on Friday and get in there and continue this season along and let's get a winning streak going here and uh, be a really good Murray State team on Friday. Congrats on the win yesterday and truly appreciate the time hopping on and joining us here on Monday. Thank you so much, Luke. I appreciate you all. Thanks, Seventh and Elm, and everyone who's watching. I we all appreciate it. We appreciate your support. We do all the emails and and congratulatory emails, texts, and everything. We appreciate it. We feel your presence. And um, even though not everyone will be able to come to the gym, we know that that you're in spirit. Thank you. Coach Hall, once again, good luck on Friday against Murray State. And for more again next week. On Monday night, the Sycamores will have another game against Western Illinois. Uh, we'll definitely preview that one on Monday night as well. But for the head coach, Vicki Hall, I am Luke Martin. For Summer Pitzer as well, who joined us earlier in the show, Jake LaRavia and head coach Greg Lansing, I am Luke Martin saying so long, everybody. You've been watching the Indiana State Coaches Show presented by 7th and Elm Bar and Grill.